a model, a machine, and a material. I hope you're hungry, because it's time for a snack pack. Welcome back to another snack pack here on the channel. A snack pack, of course, is where we take a model, a machine, and a material, and we do something awesome with it. But this snack pack is special because I have a special guest. Hello. This is Sophie Wong. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Wow. We will find out more about <laughs> Sophie Wong towards the end, where she tells you all about the various places that you can find her. But for now, we need to get into the snack pack. Let's dive right in. So we printed a thing for this. What did we print? You ready? Yeah. Control! Holy moly, Joel. This is a Joel bust. This was printed on the Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus, slightly larger than normal. And this was printed using ColorFab PLA PHA filament. Wow, this is gorgeous. Thank you. This might be the biggest 3D print I've seen. So let's break this down and let's start with the model. So the model was designed by JS Studio and there will be a link in the description of this video so you can print this model if you want to and you should. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's cool. It is cool. All right, so well, how long did it take to print this? That is a wonderful question. So this actually printed while Sean and I were, were in Prague. Uh, I actually started the print the night before we went to Prague and it finished before we got home. The total print time was four days, 11 hours, and one minute. Oh my gosh. So yeah. this, so you can take a trip to Prague during your print. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's kind of crazy to think, but that is absolutely true. That is super cool. And why did you print this? Why, why print this particular model? That's a good question. So, so I printed this model because JS Studio, he's already known on the channel here. JS Studio created the Zachary Levi S Shazam bust mm -hmm. that I, I tried to paint and will eventually give away. I know we still need to do that. Yep. Yeah. I still need to do that. What? But you know, Prague. And I thought, well, you know, he makes these cool models. And then he released this by surprise. And I thought I should print this. And sure enough, I did. So this was a surprise to you. You didn't know that he was releasing this. No, I had no idea. He's just like, hey, Joel, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, the first version had abs. And I'm like, I've got abs. And oh, then, that's so and cool. Then, and then, yeah, I got a t-shirt now. No abs. It's <laughs> fine. Awesome. It's more fluffy like in real life. And how does this fit into the context of what you're doing on your channel? Uh, well, you know, I had some comments on the last Snack Pack video where people said you should print more busts. Mm. People want to see busts of things. We've got the Captain Marvel bust right there. Well, we have another little little Joel bust right there. I think busts are interesting because they do contain certain organic elements to them. Like this one has the, these organic little bumps in the, the oh, cape yeah. or the back of the hoodie, or I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, and you can, and my, my hair, this is the nicest it's ever been. It's amazing. It is amazing. The but there's also some, incredible. some like right angles and some 45 degree angles and a lot of, a lot of areas where you can prove that the printer is actually calibrated well. And if you mm -hmm. touch, so this is actually a build plate because because this Joel's on a build plate, but you can tell it's smooth. It's nice and smooth. Oh yeah, So the printer really did, nice. uh, you can tell that um, there are some technical achievements here that the printer excelled at. Yeah, oh great, so let's talk about the printer. So this was printed on the Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus. That's right. So tell me about this printer. Well, this printer, uh, it's a large machine, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we got the stats over there. You want to run down them? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we used a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, um, and we did 0.25 millimeter layers, mm -hmm. and two perimeters. Is that two shells? Yeah, two, uh, the, the shell was, yeah, two perimeters wide. That's gotcha. right. Gotcha. Okay. And 10% infill. Mm -hmm. So that's lower than what I usually do when I'm printing something. I usually do like 20%. Is 10% lower than that's, average? That, that's the uh, that's the Sean around here. 20 20%. 20%, 20, 20 we call it the Sean infill because it's just uh, it's too much. It's it can be too much for this. So the the infill and the perimeters are going to combine to give rigidity and structure to your model. Gotcha. And if it's something that needs to have mechanical properties to it, mm -hmm. then more shells, possibly some more infill, and that's what's going to give you strength and rigidity. Mm -hmm. But this, I mean, I'm not going to for example, do the lug nuts in my car with this model. Right. It's just going to sit here and look stunning. Right. So if you did print it at 20% info, it would have added a lot more time. Yeah, we would eventually, we would have, uh, we would have doubled the amount of plastic on the inside of the model, which mm -hmm. would have probably increased the time by a, a day or two. Oh my gosh. Okay. So moving on, we've got 50 millimeters per second print speed. That's right. Is that pretty fast or pretty slow? What do you think? That is average. So the mm. Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus has quite a large print head mm -hmm. and it's heavy. So there's a lot of inertia as it's moving around. Oh, I see. So if you print too fast, there's the ability for it to have some backlash or some shake when it has to move quickly. Oh. So 50 millimeters per second is kind of like, um, 60 is usually something that I'll print on the Prusa or other machines. 50 is a little bit slower and it just ensures that the machine is able to do 
uh, a better job. It's it's not built for that machine is not built for speed. So we have 205 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. nozzle temperature and then 60 Celsius on the bed. That's right. Oh, and you used magic goo. Yeah. To hold it down on the bed. That's right. So the bed itself is uh, the, the bed on the, the Ray 3D Pro 2 Plus is a build tax sheet. Okay. But I have noticed that some of the models will get some lifting in the corner. The mm. Ray 3D doesn't have auto bed leveling, and so I have to manually make sure it's okay. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes the corners lift because it's just it's it's a pain to level. Gotcha. And uh, Magic Goo just kind of ensures that extra little bit of hold. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It was like uh, hairspray in the 80s. If you wanted your bangs really tall, you just <laughs> hit it a couple more times with Aquanet. And yeah. It held. Yeah. I actually frequently use hairspray on my 3D printer bed. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's another great build adhesion tool for yeah. 3D printers. Yeah. Sticks real good. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, so did you have any issues with this printer? No specific issues to speak of, uh, but the printer had an interesting time handling this model at such a scale. Yeah. So if we, if we look right here, Sean, do you see that? Okay. So this, uh, this model is large and it should be able to print fine without supports, but because things are so large at this scale that mm -hmm. the, the pieces where support aren't needed, some places actually mm. have areas where it's needed. So, so right back here, you can see the numbers and the letters right. and 3D printing nerd. And this part right here is essentially just a bridge across. Yes. Sean, you can see those, uh, the letters there. So that's, I, I, want, I, I don't want to say that that's necessarily a problem with the printer. It's just uh, an issue with this model at scale. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe I could enable supports, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to, so I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I figure these little things right here can be cut away. Yep. Just clean it up afterwards. Yeah, just clean it up afterwards. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, what did you like about this printer? Was there anything you didn't like? Well, what I like about this machine is the sheer size at which it's able to print. It's 12 by 12 by 24 inches tall uh, build volume and it's crazy because you can do this all in one go the color fab spool that i had on there was large and it was able to feed the the two kilograms worth of filament for this model mm -hmm. and uh that machine is awesome because it can print so large mm -hmm. but Ray's 3d doesn't put any sort of uh auto bed leveling on their machines and with a 12 by 12 plate that's big enough to where they really should mm -hmm. so the bigger the plate the more you need that extra assistance in level getting it leveled any sort of uh any sort of assistance in the mesh of the plate like if it can, if it can poke a bunch of different spots for example the prusa mm -hmm. you can enable seven by seven point mm. bed leveling and oh, wow. it, it probes seven points by seven points on the bed creates a mesh of the bed and then can make sure the nozzle follows it along. And something like that could be interesting for the Ray's 3D machine. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to level the thing. And uh, I've kind of got it level mostly, mm -hmm. but you know, once you start reaching the outer corners when you have to print this big and you want it this flat, mm -hmm. uh, I did get slight lifting uh. in, in some corners just because I don't have it as level as it needs to be and it can't adhere to the blade as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a good machine. It's just, it's like it's like missing just that little bit. Just that so little close. bit. So, so I have a question. Yes. So when you're printing something this large, I feel like it's more likely that you, your filament might run out in the middle of it. Is Absolutely. There anything you can do to to prepare for that or protect against it? What do you do? Uh, well, for this machine, the Race 3D Pro 2 Plus, it does have a filament sensor, mm. and so uh, when I was printing the Thanos blade for the mm -hmm. Thanos sword that we're making, it uh, it ran out a few times, and because the sensor would then stop the print. Mm -hmm. I would get notified on the app on my phone and oh, I could fantastic. run to the garage and swap out the filament and just let it keep printing. So the filament spool I used for this was big enough to make the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It was a two and a half kilogram roll, mm -hmm. I think it was, and mm -hmm. this was just under two kilograms. Mm -hmm. But uh, had I just used a single kilogram roll, the printer would have waited for me to get back to, from Prague and <laughs> would have had to change the filament. Nice. That's yep. nice. Should we move on to the filament? Do Let's it. Let's talk about the filament. Yes. So this filament is ColorFab PLA. PHA. That's right. And it's natural color, which I think is nice. Oh, natural. It's like bone. Like um, bone? Yeah. Wow. It looks like bone or porcelain or. No, I think natural is nice. It looks like a natural material. I like it too. Um, and you printed this at 195C to 220C. Uh, this one was actually printed at 205C. We talked about that up above right there. Right. But the PLAs typically print anywhere between 180 and 220. Color Fab has a recommended temperature range of 195C through 220C. So you just, you just, you're, as long as you're within that range-ish, mm -hmm. then you use whatever works for you. Gotcha. Because yeah. your environmental situation might have 
might come into play there, or you might have to tweak that value a little bit. Uh, it could be. Well, like for example, if you're running a hardened steel nozzle, just mm -hmm. because of the, the its properties of resisting abrasive materials. So if you're running a hardened steel nozzle, it doesn't have the same thermal conductivity properties as a brass nozzle, which means you need to heat it a little bit hotter in order oh. for the same temperature to get to the filament. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So it does matter. It, it's something you're going to dial in depending on the equipment you're using to print the filament on. That's right. If you have a machine and you have a filament, you can print some test pieces to find out the right temperature, the right speed to make it look perfect. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I got this. And then you can print your Joel bust really huge. Cool. The recommended print speed for this filament is 40 millimeters per second to 100 millimeters per second. That seems like a wide range. It is a wide range. PLAs typically have a really wide range. You can print them slow, just mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. You can also speed them up pretty well because they have such a low melting temperature compared to other filaments oh. and they're they just print easy so it's 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 not uncommon to speed up your prints when printing with PLA cool awesome oh is that it <laughs> is that it are we done that's all we got oh well this was fun I'm really happy you were here uh, I'm glad you got to see this model it's crazy how big it is it's amazing it's crazy how big it is and it kind of looks like me it is so cool totally looks like you kind of looks like me yeah kind of Oh, with, maybe okay. without your arms. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what it's for. Uh, it's kind of, it looks a bit like a trophy. It is almost like a trophy. I think it's interesting because it's, it's a Joel bust, but on a 3D printer. Yeah. And um, it seems like you're exploding out of the 3D printer. Sure, like, we'll go with exploding. Yeah. Armless and exploding. Like, Joel. <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining us on this little snack pack. Did you have a good time? Thanks for having me. It was awesome. It's a beefy snack pack. It is a bit beefy, isn't it? Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, my audience, they like the details. And they like awesome people. I like people, the details. Such as yourself. Hey, I you know what? I so much. If one of them wanted to find out more information about you, mm. how could they? Well, they could find me on Instagram. I'm Sophie Wong Makes. Or they could find me on Twitter. I'm Sophie Wong. Um, you can also find me on YouTube. Yeah. What's your YouTube? Oh, it's Sophie Wong Makes. Yeah. Okay. We'll put the links in the description. Awesome. Is that it? I mean, are we done? Yeah. I guess okay. we're just going to stand here until Sean turns the lights off. No. No, we'll end it properly. All we right. will say something like, thanks for joining us on this spack, this spack pack. This spack pack. Thanks for joining us on this snack pack. Stay hungry, and we'll see you on the next one. Can we high five? Let's do it. <gasps> thanks. <Okay. laughs> So this model was made by JS Studio, and I believe there will be a description. There will be a description. <laughs> <will> be a <laughs> and in that description, there will be a link to where you can find out more information about how to get this model. All right. Can I do that again? I'm so sorry. Sure. I'm making more work for you. It's OK. Sorry. All right. A model, a machine, and a material. Oh, I hope you're hungry. <laughs> Next time I got it. Next time they're, I got it. They're totally on board with this. <laughs> That was fantastic. <laughs>